pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, and of course we do have other congressmen too, like that case, but Bob's going to take care of all that. <laughs> if I get to mention your name. Okay. Okay. And then Peter Alexander is going to um, come and give an invocation. Peter! 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 I'm only in our eternal God. Thank you for the time that we have here together. Thank you for the freedom and liberty that you still do enjoy in our great nation. We thank you, God, for our representative, our brother Bob Good. We appreciate, God, his commitment and unwavering commitment to truth and justice. And yet we find no reason for him not to be put up for re-election. He has fought the good fight. He has unwavered in his principles and his not compromise his commission, his convictions of the Holy Father. And so we lift him up to you. We boldly ask you for a resounding victory in his campaign. May he also, may you bless his loyal supporters with what you say your precious word are the just rewards of loyalty. And we thank you, Father, and that you ask you that you would please look over his family, provide and protect him, his wife, his children, and we ask you that you bestow, we boldly ask you that you bestow upon him the rewards of the life that he is living as our servant and as representative in our house of representatives. And these we ask you and we give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. We make these requests. Amen. 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 fighting very hard to protect and preserve our country. And it's great to have you all here in the 8th Senate District in the Commonwealth of Virginia, right here in Campbell County. This turnout is amazing, and, and the group of people that you have brought are amazing. When Bob first ran four years ago, and then had a challenger this, the next go-round in the primary uh, for a convention, supported Bob right then, all the way through. He has never let anyone down. You have never had to wonder, one minute, one day, one second, where Bob Good stands. conservative principles and what is important for our country. Uh, you, you ran on those principles when you first ran. You have stuck to them the entire time. Continue to stick to them. We will send you back to Congress where you will continue to fight for those principles. Yeah. And I just, you are so right on all, all the issues, but the one, immigration. <clears throat> How we can have eight to ten million people cross our border in three and a half years and continue to fund that without taking any stance is inexcusable. Not going to get into all the other issues. You've got a lot of people here to talk. Great to have you all here in the Campbell County, Lynchburg area. Welcome. Come back anytime. Bring them on back. Keep coming. June. June 18th, a lot of work until June 18th, but it is great to have a conservative warrior like Bob Good and your friends here that you're going to introduce, and you've got a great crowd, we're going to keep working, you will get the nomination and go back, keep fighting for our country. Thank you, Bob.
Richmond and we were, what, is that too loud? No, I said get back, that's the good part. Right? Yeah, we're back, <laughs> thankfully. Uh, and we were there on the House floor and I was arguing to our colleagues across the other side of the aisle about a separation of powers issue. Because we have a judicial branch, we have an executive branch, and we have a legislative branch. And I invoked James Madison and started talking about uh, the Federalist Papers. And one of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle stood to respond and said, we're not here to talk about a bunch of old papers. Oh. See, our, our friends on the other side of the aisle, they don't understand the system that we have built here and why it's so important to keep it. And Congressman Good understands that. You know, this race, this primary that he's in right now, is really a, it's really a, a simple question. Do you believe that the country is headed in the right direction? Do you believe that we can continue on on this path on immigration? What about transportation? Can we continue to allow parts of planes to fall off while they're in the middle of the sky or bridges to collapse? If we can afford to keep going in the direction we're going, then we can put politicians there that are going to keep us on that track. But if you believe everything is going off a cliff, if we don't turn this country around, then you need fighters like Congressman Good. That's why I'm so proud to support him. I'm so proud to be here with him today. Let's get him in there in June. Thank you, guys. and sending them up to D.C. is you wonder are they going to get bogged down in the swamp. And what we see here today, look at the friends that our congressman has brought back here with him. Look at the people that he's connected with. He's made the right friends. He's made the right choices. I can remember, I have, I can have this unique brag point. I can remember campaigning for now Congressman Bob Good over here in Wildwood many years ago. Because I had I got to know Bob, I knew what he stood for, I knew what he was going to stand for. I also had the privilege of serving for two years with him on the Board of Supervisors, where a congressman knew what he believed and he knew how to get the job done. He does not waver, and so that's why I am supporting my friend and my congressman, Bob Good. <laughs>
Bob and Tracy were approached to run, and I remember speaking at an event a few years ago for Bob, and I remember saying, I suspect that this was a path that was not of his choosing. But he is a man who has chosen to be obedient to the call of God. This is not an ambition for him. It is a calling, and we have seen God anoint that calling by the impact that he's been able to have in the Congress. You know, people who um, become experts on figuring out if something's a counterfeit bill, they don't study counterfeit money. They study real money. They study the real thing. You guys here in the 5th District, you have the real thing. Yes, we do. You, you have the real thing. You are not going to be fooled. You are going to turn out and you will again, like in 2021, you will have a turnout here in this primary that is not just historic, it's not just unprecedented, it will be supernatural, and you will return Bob to the Congress. It is my absolute pleasure and honor to be able to again introduce to you my friend, my brother in Christ, and the man that I call the pride of Virginia, Congressman Bob Good. the podium and I think I probably out talked the mic anyway. Now if someone needs to tell me you can't hear me, say so. What? Alright. Thank you so much for being here today. I can't tell you what it is a blessing it is to see you in the middle of a work day, in the middle of a work week, to be out here encouraging and supporting us. This is the seventh of eleven stops on the Freedom Fighters tour across the fifth district. They've all been <laughs> wife and our children and our granddaughter who are back in the back there but just trust me my wife of 36 years Tracy, our, our daughter Sydney our son Connor daughter-in-law Tori and baby Lila Rose are back there in the corner so great to have them here today. now on this side I'm not sure she can hear but my mom is in this corner know how what an encouragement is a blessing to us. Liar McGuire cannot have events in the 5th District. Have you noticed he doesn't have events in the 5th District? He goes up to Washington, D.C. to host his fundraisers with the Rhino Establishment Moderates that he can't bring to the 5th District and campaign for him because if he brought his friends here it would actually help me and I would owe them an in my campaign President Trump, but you've come to a good campaign event where we support President Trump. My friend, Larry McGuire, he has to have phony Trump events, which are really Mc McGuire campaign events because he can't get anybody to turn out otherwise. Thank you for showing that the people of the 5th District are different and they are behind this true, courageous, conservative movement here in the 5th District, and we're not going to let this seat be taken from us. from here. I grew up in the city of Lynchburg, lower income family, food stamps, free school, uh, free school lunch. Remember, family didn't have a car. Sometimes we didn't have groceries. Uh, I remember walking to, to the grocery store as a little kid with the food stamps, embarrassed about it, getting one bag of groceries so I could carry it back. That's how I grew up, working all of my life. By the Lord's grace, though, I came to know the Lord when I was a little kid, was taken to church and taken to Sunday school and learned God's word. And by his grace, you know, that's been the most important thing in my life since I was nine years old. Amen. Amen. 
but I, I'm privileged to go to Liberty University, work Woo! here at the university for 17 years after, I'm sorry, 15 years after 17 years at Citigroup. Tracy and I lived for 17 years, just a couple of miles down here in our beloved Campbell County. Yeah. And we're proud to be back here today. After my mom, uh, in here we got Kurt Deamer, I've known for almost 50 years. We went to school together. I've got Jeff Helgus here, I've known for almost 40 years. We wrestled together, roommates. This is our home. It's so great to be in the greater Lynchburg community here, technically in Campbell County, just outside the city with our Lynchburg address. <coughs> uh, this campaign is a contrast between the Washington, D.C. swamp, who wants to strike back against courageous warriors like these ones who are here behind me, by the way, wants to punish us for daring to make a difference, to, for daring to say the border invasion, not on our watch, at least not with our help, without our help. The reckless spending that's destroying the future for our kids and our grandkids, we're not going to vote for that. We're going to stand up and say no. We're not going to allow the federal government to spy on U.S. citizens without a warrant, at least not with our help. We think those things are not just talking points and <laughs> campaign slogans, but we actually ought to put actions and resolve and a willingness to fight for you instead of just talking about them in Washington. And we expose the pretenders, yeah. and they don't like it, right. and they want to retaliate, and pay somebody $5 million to run against me in this district. I've run for two things in my life. Two things. I was 50 years old when people like Eric Zare and Rick Boyer and James, Jim Borland, they're here today, we served in the, in the Board of Supervisors together, asked Tracy and I to consider running for county supervisor. We resisted. We said, we'll help you find somebody else because my job at Liberty was so demanding. But we served four years. The Lord kind of gave us a piece about doing it. Said we weren't going to run again. And then some of the very same people in this room asked us to run for Congress. We did not seek it out. We did not pursue it. It wasn't selfish ambition or pride or reaching for the next rung on the political ladder or whatever it might be. We literally were willing to walk through the door, defer to someone else if the Lord opened the door for them. But the Lord gave us that. I quit my job at Liberty for a year. Didn't have any income. And being obedient. I worked at a college. Again, I wasn't a wealthy guy because I believe the Lord was calling us to do this. I told you what I would be. I would be a biblical and constitutional conservative. And the media hated that. And I said I was a biblical They spent $11 million on the other side trying to bait me because they said this guy could never get elected. Virtually nobody in D.C. helped me. They were all on the side of a fella named Denver Riggleman. I'll just leave it there. You know he had the swamp support? He had, he had all the endorsements. He had all the money. Uh, but the 5th District people thought differently. My opponent, on the other hand, he's in two or three races a year. <laughs> he runs more than one time a year. You, you weigh $5 million in front of him, you know, he was probably going to run anyway. And so that's what we're up in a battle against. And I'm going to introduce in a moment uh, members of Congress who are here with me. And I want you to know how unusual it is to have one, two, three, four. We've just got the three and the four, one former. I'm not leaving anybody out there, right? The four. Four members of Congress, one of them a chief of staff for the president. Texas and in Georgia and in Florida in their districts, but they realize what this race is about. They realize this race is bigger than just one house seat. And we can't let the swamp win. We can't let the empire strike back and be victorious. We can't let it happen. And what a blessing it is to have them here. Uh, I'm going to introduce each of them in a moment individually. I'm going to call an audible, and I've talked a little longer than I'd like to with my friends that y'all are really here to, here to support and see. Uh, but this is my last event today. We got four more tomorrow. I'm going off to West Virginia from here uh, to uh, West Virginia. <laughs> I'm going to support our friend Alex Moody, a great conservative warrior, a member of the Freedom Caucus, who's taken that seat from Joe Manchin. He's running against a phony Republican who was a Democrat like a week ago. Yeah. If he stays out of jail, you know, we'll be in the primary, I guess. Uh, but Alex Mooney, I'm going to go try to help him with an event tonight, and then back to Amelia County and four events here in the district tomorrow. So pray for me as I'm traveling over that mountain by myself. But uh, 
But before I introduce my friends who are here, again, to have four members of Congress here is a big deal. I got two other courageous warriors who are running that I want to give a couple. I'm calling an audible, so I'm going to limit you guys to two minutes now. Two minutes. That's tough for a politician to do. Uh, but we'll start with our seventh district candidate, our border district. This is an open seat. It was the, the wonderful Dave Brat. Then it became the communist Al Abigail Spanberger. She's not running yet. She's trying to be our governor, by the way. we got to stop that. But in the meantime, we got to get former Navy SEAL, who doesn't talk about it a whole lot, former Navy SEAL Cameron Hamilton, courageous conservative warrior. Minutes here about your race and how we can help you in the seventh district. Fortunately, I'm known for being short winded. Uh, really You've seen it on Fox News, I should say that. You've seen it on these major media sites. <laughs> well, thank Even you the all. conservative ones, too. <laughs> so so I, I have the absolute honor of being endorsed by Bob, and it's an absolute privilege for me to support Bob in this current fight. I've given most of my life to service, spent nearly two decades serving this country in the military, at the State Department and the Department of Homeland Security. And as you enter the political realm, there's natural apprehension that some have towards service in politics. The concern being is you're a fighter, but when you become a politician, you become a yes man. You become one to go with the flow. You become one that will simply try to support the team, even when the team's going in the wrong direction. I think it's time that we've had enough of that. Yes. I'm yeah. sick and tired of watching the future and watching the great blessings of this country being squandered before my children's eyes. Someone like Bob Good is a unique individual in Congress because he said no more. And he stood for principle even when it was unpopular. Speaker of the House became elected, right? Gets up there and talks about the number one responsibility of the Republican Party is to expand the majority. There was really only one man that pushed back against that. Bob's point was, it's our responsibility to govern conservatively, whether we are in the majority or not. So Bob is an absolute fighter, and I can say it's a privilege to be out here supporting him. It's a privilege to find any way to make sure we generate effort for this man. So I'm Cameron Hamilton. I'm proud to be supporting my good friend Bob Good, and it would be an honor to work with him. I work in the Slippery Seven, so we'll call it LA. I'm trying to bring it back onto the good side, so we're trying to save the Seven. Oh, but either way, God bless you all. The support of the and the swamp is not behind the courageous conservative warrior. They got their candidate that I, all the powers are lined up because he'll be picked by the same person funding my opponent's campaign. Uh, I think Bannon said it best. He put out a post, maybe you saw it, it said, McGuire equals McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah. McCarthy already had picked, hand picked his opponent, I'm not even going to say his name, and they're putting millions behind his opponent, but the people are behind Cameron Hamilton. Speaking of the people, uh, most of us, I certainly I have, endorsed Scott Parkinson for the state senate race. Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren from a voting record standpoint as our two senators, but that's essentially what we've got here in Virginia. Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren voting for us here in Virginia because our two senators vote 90-something percent with those two. Well, we got to stop and end that, and, and I've endorsed Scott Parkinson for Senate and asked him to go ahead and say a few words as well. Yeah. I've been with the Freedom Tour for the last day and a half. We've on the seventh stop today, and it's just so awesome to be with Chairman Bob Good, the Chairman of the House Freedom Caucus. I'm running for the United States Senate about against Tim Kaine, but you know what? This event is about Bob Good, and I just want to tell you guys why I strongly support him in his race for re-election, and it's because he is the conservative behind closed doors that is making a difference for all of our God-given freedoms. And we need people like that to fight for Virginia. I'm tired of people trampling upon our First Amendment, Second Amendment, Fourth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Sixth Amendment, and Eighth Amendment rights. But we've got the Freedom Caucus in our corner. Are we all in Bob Good's corner? Yeah. <laughs> Bob and I have talked many, many times. He endorsed me in November. 
And I get to pray for him and Tracy and their family. And I know that they're praying for me and Cortland and my four kids. This is about our future. Let's fight back for freedom. Let's stand with the House Freedom Caucus. And let's win Virginia in 2024. God bless you all. to make friends and but I have made a few I've made more enemies but I think I've made more friends in the 5th district than I've made enemies I think you guys are going to show that on June 18 you know I got told when you go to Washington they're all corrupt they're all crooked don't trust any of them they're all there for the wrong reasons and the truth is like my opponent would be if he had the chance we're not going to let him have that chance but most of them are there to be there to see how long they can stay. And often after we're battling and we're debating and we're we're on the floor and we're fighting or in a con they'll come up and go, Yeah, I agree with you. I'm just as conservative as you are, but I can't do that for this reason or that reason. And you know what? It doesn't matter what you believe. Of course it does. It does matter what you but it doesn't matter what you believe if you won't fight for it. If you won't take a risk for it. If you won't bled for it, and in some cases died for what we are enjoying today. If you're a veteran here, raise your hand. Our mem family members are veteran. Thank God. Thank God for a veteran. Thank God for a veteran. Thank God for a veteran. But I got there and I found out, I knew I wanted to join the Freedom Caucus. And I found out it was as advertised. And I have come away with respect and admiration and just a kindred spirit with those warriors who are the tip of the spear, holding our party to, accountable to be who we say we are, to do what we say we will do, and even when necessary, and unfortunately it's often necessary, yeah. confronting our own party when they're betraying you yeah. and hoping you don't know about it. Yeah. Well, I've made it long enough. The first one I am going to introduce is the founder of the Freedom Caucus, yes. the chief, that's the title of the book, Chief, Mark Meadows, drove up himself from South Carolina to be with us last night. What a great crowd. Thank you, you guys, so much for being here to support Bob. And, and listen, when you hear him get excited... You know, Bob, that I've been with you three different times, four different times, and that's the most animated that I've seen. <laughs> uh, you can tell you're among family here, uh, but I will say this: uh, you know, for the elected officials that got up, I, I want to thank you guys uh, for for actually getting up and supporting Bob Good. Woo! Because the easy thing to do is to say, "I'm with you," but I can't really tell anybody. So God bless you all, and Senator, with that hair, you can go places. I know. <laughs> As I said, Senator, with that hair, you can go places. Uh, we, we love you guys. Uh, it is so good to be, uh, be back here. And so many of you have said you know, you're praying for the president praying for our country. Uh, many of you I've met before uh, here, and and honestly, uh, it's touching because as you come up and remind me of, of when we met, uh, I can tell you're earnest in your prayers for our country. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you because God still reigns over the affairs of this nation. Yeah. <laughs> contagious and I can tell you when most of the people they get sent to Washington DC and Cameron will tell you when he came in and he was talking to me and I said Cameron I, I don't need another politician I need another warrior I need somebody who's willing to stand up because if you're willing to stand up and sacrifice everything it's amazing the fruit that comes from that and your congressman Bob Good has done exactly that you know, the passion that you see here today is the same passion you see in Washington, D.C. He doesn't lick his first finger and say, which way is the wind blowing and what is my position today? He knows where 
true Lord is. Yep. And, and I just want to say, Bob, it's an honor to be here for you today. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm from the upstate of South Carolina, real pro-Trump area, but you guys may be kind of... Uh, <laughs> take June 18th for granted. That's right. Here's here's the issue. Many people will not go and vote. Many of your friends will not go and vote. Many of the people you go to church with will not go and vote. And here's what I'm telling you is make sure that your friends get out and vote. And if they're voting the right way, make sure you tell them that it's June 18th. If they're voting the wrong way, no. but, but I can tell you, June 19th, I can tell you these elections are won and lost by one word at a time being shared with another person in small communities and in, in precincts across Virginia 5. And so... God bless you. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you for sending me a real freedom fighter and Bob Good. God bless you. As my friend was finishing, I'm reminded of the Apostle Paul who said he bore in his body the marks of the service to the Lord. He bears on himself the marks of the weaponized enemy, the government, coming after conservatives. He wears those marks on his body. He's a hero to all of us because of his service to the greatest president of our lifetime. Yes. Thank you, Mark. comes from the state of Georgia, where Tracy and I lived for three years and absolutely love it. They don't think we're the South down there, by the way. <laughs> the Andrew tells the truth. I wonder, interesting, almost all my friends are from the South, but, uh, but Andrew is a combat veteran. He'll say a little bit about that, I hope. You can see those boots he's got on there. Those are real combat boots. And uh, he, is, uh, he took on the IRS and beat them. He stood up for all of us with an oppressive, weaponized federal agency seizing assets from citizens. And he beat them in court. He has the, the finest, most impressive armory. You might call it a gun store. It looks like a castle down in Athens, Georgia. He and I came in together as freshmen, and he's been on all the right sides and all the fights as, as well. We got him, thankfully, we used the... The, the, the fight that uh, especially Chip kind of led on this, on the negotiations on this uh, with the previous speaker to get Andrew on the Appropriations Committee because he don't want to spend y'all's money. <laughs> and they don't like him on the Appropriations Committee, but we love him on there. Welcome, Andrew Clyde. Thank you. I bring you greetings from the great state of Georgia. Uh, I hope y'all can hear me now all, all the way back there. I, I don't have the strongest of voice right now, but um, I just want to tell you that that uh, it's a pleasure to serve with Chairman of the Freedom Caucus, Bob Good. Now, I support of Bob Good because I believe that Bob Good is the man for Virginia Five. He's the man that needs to come back to Congress. He's the man that our country needs. He is the leader of our Freedom Caucus and the leader of the movement that literally the only folks that are going to save our country are the folks that follow the, the flow of the Freedom Caucus and what we do. Uh, whether it's spending, reducing spending, whether it's securing our southern border, fighting for that, uh, whether it's fighting to reduce crime, all of that, and, and there's a myriad of other issues that, that we are dealing with. But the Freedom Caucus is leading on it, and our country needs to follow the way we're the way the Freedom Caucus is going, or we're not going to have a country. You know, Bob mentioned I've served time in the military. I've got 28 years. I've got 11 active, 17 reserve, three combat tours. 
Um, I, I'm not a Navy SEAL like Cameron over there. I'm a Navy CB. We got a motto. That's right. We got a motto. It's we build, we fight. All right. That's the motto of the Navy CBs. And, uh, and fight we will. And it's a pleasure to be with Bob on this Freedom Fighters Tour. Uh, but I think Cameron will agree with me. You don't have to wear the cloth of our uniform, of our, our nation. You don't have to wear combat boots. You don't have to have served in combat to have a warrior's heart. Because it's from a warrior's heart that comes the courage and the decisions and, and being willing to take the slings and arrows that come at you verbally and challenge you and try to intimidate you. That comes, that the ability, the courage that it takes to stand up against that comes from a warrior's heart. You know, in, 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 a, um, in one of our last meetings, I wrote down a little phrase here, and it says, um, it says, God's word is a humble source of courage. And that is so very true. And I know that Bob, like, like the rest of us, you know, he spends time in that word. He, and that word is what truly gives us the courage to do what we do today. So I stand here in support of Bob. I, I want to touch on one other thing. I know Chip Roy is going to, from Texas, is going to talk about, he's going to talk about border. Well, I'm from Athens, Georgia. That's my home community. About a month and a half ago, we had an absolute tragedy there. A young lady, a beautiful young lady, a student at Augusta University that was on the campus of the University of Georgia, was brutally, and I mean brutally, murdered by an illegal alien, someone who should never, ever, ever have been here. Someone who the Biden administration's weaponization of the open borders parole policy allowed into this country, promoted into this country, literally with government benefits to come into this country. That has to stop. It made Georgia truly, it made my community feel like we are a border state because truly every state is now a border state with what the Biden administration is doing to our country. Bob Good is going to help us stop that. And brother, Bob Good is good for Congress. He's better for us, and he's great for our nation. Thank you. This morning we had Andy Biggs from Arizona with us, and he was with us yesterday. We had Andy Harris from Maryland with us. We're going to have Dan Bishop joining the tour before we're done, the wonderful, courageous warrior from North Carolina. We're playing another one of these at the end of next month, by the way, a second Freedom Tour, too, because folks want us to take it to the counties that we missed. But we got some firepower still to come. I know he's one of you here coming up behind him. We're going to go the only place we can go a little further south than Georgia next. And, uh, you know, I don't know how this guy gets through the airports to be here. When we're together at events, at my events, it's like, I'm here too. It's not just Matt Gates here. <laughs> no, Matt Gates travels all over the country because he's in high demand. And he's helping elect courageous conservative warriors all over the country. Because, I'm sorry, I'll say it. We steal from each other. He, I, from him, at least. Uh, but he's, he's recognized, hey, we can't win the war with fighters we got there, or the lack of fighters we got. We need some more troops. We need some more reinforcements. Matt Gates is traveling out there from here. So welcome, my friend, Matt Gates. So it can be said, I take a backseat to no woman or man when it comes to standing up for President Donald Trump. <laughs> the best thing we can do to animate and excite and illuminate and execute on the Trump agenda is to elect Bob Good back to the United States. <laughs> enough of these folks who always just seem to be worried about the next job. How about do the job you were elected to do? That's a message I have for a lot of our folks that are walking off the job in Congress, and it's also a message I have for Mr. McGuire, because if he will abandon the Senate seat he was just elected to to disrupt our team, then he will do, he will abandon you when the votes matter, when the votes really come. Amen. Right. You have seen 
seeing the work we have done to try to change Congress, and that is the essence of our message. Congress must change. We can't keep doing things the way we've been doing them. We're 34 trillion in debt. We're running two and a half trillion dollar annual deficits. We see interest rates rising. Your starter home is now your forever home. People can't afford a new car loan. They are, we've got 61% of the country living paycheck to paycheck right now, and folks are having to turn to those credit cards more and more to get from one paycheck to the next. And when they do, they see the cost of money increasing. And my friends, that is not an accident. That is happening because because of the reckless spending policies in Washington because there is a lack of courage. And the leader, the masthead, the person that House conservatives follow to give us that courage and inspire us is your Congressman, Bob Good. Talking about it, changing the rules, it hasn't done enough for you. Do you feel as though this Republican majority has fulfilled its commitment to fight against the spending it has not. And so we must not only change the rules in Congress to get term limits, to get balanced budget amendments, to get single subject bills yeah. so that not everything is put together in one big fight. We must also change some of the people. Yes, CNN did a big story that a lot of folks were choosing not to run for re-election and they, they were blaming me. So I guess what I have to say is, you're welcome. We have, to, we have to have a line change. We have to have a new generation of patriots. And because we are out there making the case, even, even against some of our colleagues, they've chosen to try to make an example out of Bob Good. And their bet, their hope, is that the patriots in Virginia Five can be fooled. That you can believe that somebody with all of the lobbyist money and special interest money behind them can take all of that and not be beholden to it. Well, you know what? That's just not honest. That's not true. And whether you agree with Bob or disagree with Bob on any particular issue, you know his heart, you know his conscience, you know his faith, and you know he is sincerely representing the interests that will move our nation forward. On the budgets, on the borders, on the bureaucrats, we don't need any more of these surrender Republicans. We've had too much of that, and when the left takes power, they yank us so far to the left, and then when the right has even a node of influence or leverage, we are all too willing to let it go just so that we are not criticized. So, so here's what I'm gonna ask you. In Virginia, Americans have come to resolve the big questions of our country for a long time, from the beginning of our country, from the times of revolution to the Civil War. And what I can tell you is right now, we are in a war over the identity of the Republican Party. Yes. And I want a Republican Party that believes in strong borders, that will put downward pressure on spending, and that will actually put the interests of our people before the interests of people oceans away. I don't believe that that is too much. Time. get passed and you see more than 100 Republicans vote for them, there can be times of great discouragement. Why do they let us down in these ways? But we are lighting the fires of freedom yet again. We are waking this country up. And I think back to those darkest days uh, at Valley Forge, where Washington, a great Virginian, was, was writing letters back and forth with the Congress. And they were kind of quibbling back and forth the Congress didn't have any more money to send. Washington was dealing with desertions, almost a mutiny a day. And he wrote to the Congress and he said, we have no food, we have no money, so now we must think. There are times in our movement where we are out-resourced, but you know what, it's because for all of the powerful folks in Washington and California that want to replace your voice in Congress, what they know is that there are actually more of us than there are of them. And that terrifies them and it should. Final stars, as we were uh, coming in to uh, Scottsville this morning, I stopped for a cup of coffee at one of the Sun Coast, and I meet this lovely lady, and she sees me and lights up. She says, oh my gosh, my boyfriend is going to be so upset. He really likes you and usually works here with me. And he's gone. Can we get a photo? I said, well... We can take a photo, but you know, can you promise me you'll get out on June 18th and vote for Bob Good? She said, oh yeah, I was planning to do that. I said, well, if we, if we send the photo to your boyfriend, you think you could get him to vote for Bob Good? And she looked at me just as honest as she could and said, you know what, Congressman, since you asked, I'll even get my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> Bring your 
veterans and your exes, bring your family, bring your hunting dogs, bring your in-laws, and even bring your outlaws. But get out there on June 18th and let you show them the Virginia Five is going to shock the world and stand the top of reasons why some of us can't get on TV more often because he's so, he's so good at being the messenger and I often say he's, he's our most effective voice uh, but he's not just talented you see that on the house floor you see the he's really brilliant he's one of the smartest members of Congress also that's why he's our top what's that it's a low bar it's a low bar he said <laughs> chair in the House Freedom Caucus. He's the brains behind what we do, and he is certainly my right arm as chairman, is, 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 our, is, is the, our next speaker. Uh, and he makes, I don't know, he's giving Matt a run, I don't know which one, but they're the two that make the other side, and the Democrats too, but they're the ones who make the other side really angry in Washington because they expose them, they call them out. <clears throat> You, know, he, he, you saw a speech he gave, it's been a month or two now. He said, what are we running on in November? What have we delivered on for the American people with the majority he trusted us with? Join my friend, courageous conservative warrior from Texas, Chip Roy. Yeah. Lynchburg. Can you all hear me back here? Let me squeeze back here. I just want to look at people in the eye. Thank you all for coming here. Thank you. Guys got in early, got the tables here, kind of in the back, but can everybody hear me? Yeah. All right. Well, look, we're here and we're here for one reason only, and that is to make sure that Bob Good, the head of the Freedom Caucus, is sent back to Washington next Congress. That's why we're here. <laughs> None of us, we're all going out and we're getting, you know, doing our campaigns, get reelected. None of us want to go back next January without Bob Good. Right. <laughs> Bob was pointing out earlier, James Madison held this seat. That means something. Think about it. Father of the Constitution held this seat. This seat is now the head of the Freedom Caucus, which is standing up for you all against an establishment in Washington that thinks they know best. And they're angry. And they're pushing back. Because when we go down to the floor, as we did on Friday, and we highlight all of the things that they are doing, funding a $1.2 trillion bill to keep racking up a trillion dollars of debt every 100 days, not to do great things, but to fund the United Nations that just sided with Hamas over Israel, yeah. to fund the World Health Organization, which wants to take away your sovereignty, yeah. to fund wide open borders that Andrew just pointed out, led to the directly led to the death of Lake and Riley in Georgia, and thousands of Americans, including the six kids in the school district in which my family lives who died from fentanyl poisoning last year alone. We are under assault. Our way of life is under assault. Matt said it. They want to destroy everything that is great and good about this country. And this state, this commonwealth, has been at the epicenter of all that has been good and great in this country from the very beginning. Now is your time to stand up and send a message. Right? What started here in Jamestown, what went through all of the roads through this state, whether it's in Richmond, whether it was in Appomattox, whether it was up north on the battlefield, all of the history of this nation the cradle of democracy, Virginia. You guys get to take this country back. You guys get to be the tip of the spear right now by sending a loud message to the establishment in Washington who think they can come down and spend $5 million and buy a seat purposely, purposely to say, you guys just sit down and shut up. Well, guess what? We're not going to sit down and shut up. since the 1850s. I met a couple of Texans in here earlier who moved up here to Virginia. Why not? I got to talk to you about that. But, but no, but uh, my family's been there for forever. My great-great-grandfather was a Texas Ranger. 
my great 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 grandparents are buried just a few miles down from my the 10 acres my wife and I have just southwest of Austin. But as a proud Texan, I gotta I gotta speak the truth. I went to high school and college right here in the Commonwealth. I went to the University of Virginia. I came to Boys State in 1989 at Liberty. Wow. 35 years ago. Wait, how did that happen? I'm not sure how that happened. But I appreciate deeply this state. You guys right now have been put in the, the back seat for a while. Virginia's purple, right? Virginia's lost. We're losing it to Arlington and Alexandria in Northern Virginia. But right here in Lynchburg, where we've been throughout the last two days, whether it was in Louisa or in Appomattox or whether it's Midlothian, southwest of Richmond, the people here are God-fearing, conservative people who want their country back. Yeah. consider to be a long cold war to take our country back and fight to make sure as Matt said we take the Republican Party back yes. go back in time just for a minute 2009 in the wake of Obama what happened we had the Tea Party what happened we got Mike Lee elected instead of establishment Bob Bennett we got Rand Paul instead of the establishment preferred Trey Grayson in Kentucky we got Marco Rubio or Charlie Crist who ended up being a Democrat and ran against Ron DeSantis like the Republican establishment in Washington wanted Charlie Crist. He was a Democrat. The wins that we chalked up led to Ted Cruz beating David Dewhurst and coming to the United States Senate. I was his chief of staff. We fought Obamacare in 2013. All of the establishment said, you can't do that. We'll lose seats. We gained six seats in the Senate the next year because we fought. Caucus was founded. Mark Meadows, Jim Jordan, a bunch of patriots founded the Freedom Caucus. And then what happened in 2016? America yeah. sent somebody to Washington to join the Senate. What you're seeing right now is the continuation of the swamp that fought back against President Trump. They want to take out Bob Good. The attack on Bob Good is an attack on Donald Trump. It's an attack on our way of life. It's an attack on freedom. So you know what to do. Just like all of the founders before us who stood up on that wall, the Alamo, I represent San Antonio, the 180 men that stood on that wall, knowing what was going to happen. Ask yourself what you're going to do. You've got Bedford right down the road commemorating D-Day. 80 years ago, in 1944, they walked into a wall of bullets. They scaled the cliffs. They ended up in the foxholes in Bastogne. What are we going to do today to honor their memory? i tell you what we're going to do. We're going to tell the establishment to pound sand that we believe in America, and we're going to send Bob Good back to our Thank you. I can't tell you. When we get back to our districts, the happiest day for me right now is when I put D.C. in the rearview mirror and I get in my car and head south. I feel like a kid on the last day of school going back to the refuge, the oasis that is the 5th District. Your prayers, your encouragement, your support is everything. This seat belongs to you. I'm not entitled to it. You guys trusted it to me back in 2022. You trusted it to me in 2020. I'm asking you to trust it to you again.